And we're back with our lovely behinds in this very couch. And today we're gonna bring you the biggest, best, most wonderful, occasionally sad news stories of 2012. Emily's gonna walk us through the, those stories that have really defined the last 12 months. Take it away, Em. There were a lot of spectacular events in 2012. The implosion of 38 studios, Singers Fall from Grace and the collapse of retailers game. But one interesting development was that of cloud gaming. The two most prominent players in this space, OnLive and Gaikai, had very different 2012s, even with both companies being sold during the year. OnLive was picked up for a mere $4.8 million in a bid to avoid bankruptcy while Sony splashed a massive $380 million in order to secure the technology and know-how of Gaikai. Cloud gaming still has a lot left to prove in 2013, but the Gaikai deal suggests it will play a large part in the next generation of consoles. There have been many big stories coming out of Bioware this year. The launch of Star Wars The Old Republic is short run as a pay-to-play game and the departure of its founders, Ray Musuka and Greg Seschuk. But perhaps no story was bigger than what happened when players reached the end of the Mass Effect trilogy back in March. Long-time fans were disappointed in the endings, where few of your choices seemed of consequence. There were contradictions to the lore, as well as a lack of a final showdown. Bioware announced back in early April they would release an extended cut in June, with more detailed endings and add a fourth ending. Ouya, the Android-based open platform solution, was big news this year, as it took Kickstarter by storm in July and achieved a mind-boggling $8.6 million in funding, basically getting pre-orders from around 60,000 people for the $99 console. What attracted us was the open nature of the console, the power it housed and the love for independent developers. 2013 will be the year when Ouya needs to prove itself and show us that our trust wasn't misplaced. November 18 saw the first Wii U reach gamers in North America, with the European launch following on November 30th and Japan getting theirs on December 8th. Demand was high and supply was fairly low, even with higher than expected prices. The future of the console still lies in the balance with many analysts and journalists remaining skeptical about the prospects of the innovative yet perceived to be underpowered console. The launch saw games like New Super Mario Bros. U, Nintendo Land and Zombie U performing well, and in Japan, Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate reigning supreme. But it remains to be seen if the Wii U audience has any interest in cross-platform third-party releases. The PS Vita was originally released in December last year in Japan, but it wasn't until February 2012 that the new Sony handheld made it over to Europe and North America. The very capable and versatile device has struggled to convince gamers of its strength. And whether that is a result of increased competition from smartphones and tablets in the handheld space, its relatively high price or the not so impressive lineup of games remains a subject for discussion. One thing is clear. Sony is going to need better exclusives than Call of Duty Black Ops Declassified in 2013 if they hope to save the PS Vita from sinking without a trace. Maybe the real story here isn't with Watch Dogs itself, but rather why it stood out as much as it did during E3 this summer. Gamers across the world were dying for any scraps of next-gen information. But with Sony and Microsoft keeping mute and Nintendo's Wii U failing at distinguishing itself enough from this generation of hardware. What we saw from a fresh new intellectual property in Watch Dogs somehow became a beacon of hope in a sea of sequels. Although producer Dominic Guay confirmed in our E3 interview that the game was scheduled for current gen. All right, just wrap, sugar wrapping up. What platforms are going? What, what platform is that running on? And what platforms can we expect to see it on? Yes. And when can we expect yeah. to see it? So this year at E3, we're running on PC. We're definitely not shipping this year. 
Uh, we don't have it shipped date yet. When we do ship, we'll support multiple platforms, that's for sure. So we're going for 360, PS3, all the platforms for sure. Okay, so this generation of console. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely. And even in the in the booth, we're showing how we can extend the experience on mobile devices. So I think that gives you a pretty good idea of how committed we are to supporting as many platforms as possible. The sketchy information with regards to platforms in the following months suggests to us that Watch Dogs is being targeted for release on the next Xbox and PlayStation. Watch Dogs was joined by several other games later in the year, including Metal Gear Solid Ground Zeroes and Dragon Age 3 Inquisition. We cannot wait for next gen and we cannot wait for Watch Dogs. It was quite a challenge to pick those uh, biggest news stories of the year. Of yeah. course, perhaps the story that never came. <laughs> the biggest one was the one that never came, came to fruition. Which was the announcement of the new consoles. Uh, Sony and Microsoft teased us at E3. Um, so hopefully this time next year we're, we'll be talking about those new consoles. Because we've been hearing time. a lot about games that don't really have any platforms mm. yet. So we've, we've, pe we've pegged a few that perhaps may appear may, as launch yeah. for the next gen of consoles. But unfortunately we're going to have to wait until that point. But that's us for today's show. Um, all that's left for us to do is to introduce you to today's Indie Darling and let Emily introduce today's competition. Christian from Game Director Germany. Uh, my most beloved indie game from 2012 is Spelunky. It's just, I died in it so many, many, many times and uh, it felt so good uh, with all these random levels. Every time you have a, a different uh, experience with the game and you feel the love Derek you put in it in, in every second you play it. So. Go ahead, get it, Spelunky, on Xbox Live Arcade or your PC. What is the name of the magazine where the Spy vs. Spy comic strip originally appeared? Write us an email with the answer in the subject line for a chance to win Spy vs. Spy on iOS. Make sure we receive your email before 12 noon tomorrow, Central European time. Good luck.